Judd. We're live on the air. Jim just went to the Jim just went to the bathroom. I, uh, I I I apologize. You're coming in here. It really feels unprofessional. But uh, Jim Jim's been having a problem drinking cold brews. You know. Why is he having cold brews? I, I don't I don't know. That's what he likes. He likes to drink his cold brews. It's Mike Fort, Troy. Um, cold brewed coffee. Yeah, he likes to drink his cold brew coffee, and I guess it gives him the shits because this is now the second time in two weeks where he's just. Right after a break, too. Can I say it smells like it, it has? Uh, this is not the you know the freshest space I've ever walked it into. Is, it is. Uh, it's just an EW radio, and it was a fresher space. It was. I try to tell Jim that his scent isn't welcoming to it, guests it, whatsoever. I mean, it might be welcoming to certain people. But not you? But not me. I'm, not I don't feel welcome. But well, others might be like, this is heaven. I like that. that you, can't, <laughs> you can't speak for everybody. I, who am I to speak for taste? Right. You can speak for yourself only. Everybody has their own thing. I appreciate that. What are you going to do? Yeah. Was there any uh, backlash from, from anybody in your life about coming in here after Seth canceled everything because of Bannon? Well, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating issue, this idea of... of uh, you know who should be allowed to speak, right? And and what we make of everybody's opinions. And here's the problem: the president has the worst opinion of all. He, you know, he he's the person that we wish was not on the air. Mm -hmm. And and I, it's you know it's interesting. You know, if if Trump gets through four years, God forbid, eight, at the end of it, we might go. Well, that's America, and it's freedom of speech, and it was good. We all shared ideas. But if he gets us in some war and kills a million people, we'll probably go, yeah, we probably shouldn't have had all those people promoting this. Uh, but who knows? I mean, it's, it, right, it's so very it's hard to develop opinions about it because there are so many awful people that if, uh, if, if everyone who's awful is gone, uh, it'll just be, you know, you know, Sam alone in a room just babbling to himself. Right. They won't let Jim come back from the shitter. Yeah. Ever. I mean, I don't really have a strong opinion. What have your guys' uh, opinion been? I guess your opinion is everyone should speak because... Right. And I, I also, I feel like it'd be, I think Jim feels the same way. It'd be more of an issue if Sirius was like, we're just all right-wing people and this is what we do, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But because Sirius is the, probably the only place on radio where they have really strong progressive talk shows as well. Like, that hasn't really worked much on terrestrial radio. It's kind of gone away. It's complicated because it is someone who's pro-pedophile. So if you if you, if you you adjusted it a little bit, right? If right. You said, There's just a guy. Hey, this this guy is going to have his own radio show. He wants a pedophile. Yeah, a guy who fucks kids. Although... Uh, in the Senate. And, and he also... Now, the same guy mm -hmm. thinks women shouldn't be allowed to do almost anything. Homosexuals should be in jail. And the same guy thinks Muslims should not be allowed in any legislation. But, but he's not totally closed off against everybody. Pedophiles are okay, and it's a, <laughs> it's it's accused pedophiles. Roy Moore now now has said, "Well, I didn't do anything actually." Well, he certainly said Muslims should not be allowed to be uh, in uh, Congress or the Senate, right? And that goes against the Constitution. Roy Moore said that. You mean? Yeah. Or Steve, yeah. That's his position, right? That is an open position. Homosexuals should be in jail, mm -hmm. and so when you when you pay him. You're basically saying we got this great guy. He thinks he think he's against freedom of religion. That's right. what he's into. We love him anyway, and that's what Bannon is saying that we he supported that guy before the pedophile stuff and then stayed with him. But I also think that like when you when you uh, say like okay, well I'm not going to get involved with Sirius because of that guy, mm -hmm. you almost turn him into this supervillain, which yeah, has I been am. his appeal. You this know? is what's complicated about it. We all believe in freedom of speech. But the you know companies decide who they want to pay to speak, right? And so uh, you know, if I was in charge of a company, that wouldn't be my move. Mm -hmm. I, if they said like, yeah, the guy who doesn't believe in freedom of religion, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be writing checks to him. I understand why it's what's happening in this country. So in a way, you have to honestly reflect what the conversation is. Precisely. Uh, but in a way, are you promoting hate speech? And probably you are. You're promoting someone who thinks that people uh, who are in love with each other, who are the same sex, should be in jail. Oh, he's and going to so Steve Bannon. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> How did you know? I don't know. I, I just sensed that you mentioned Seth, and that that's what the direction went. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think, you know, all these things are coming at us so quickly, it's hard for us to decide what we want to do, how we want to process it. I, I appreciate that Seth did that because, you know, the thing you, you see, like when you think about like Cosby and Harvey Weinstein and all that, is nobody has the balls to make any sacrifice 
uh, of their career or their potential to make money in order to stand up for anything. So if a guy knows Harvey Weinstein hurts people, but he's going to make a lot of money on the next movie, he's probably not running to the heads of agencies and studios and saying, let's shut this guy down. Oh, I'm going to lose millions, but we got to shut this guy down. He's hurting people. No one does that. So the idea that Seth is saying, you know what? This is important to me. I have the disaster artists in theaters. I'm not coming in. I, I, I respect that. I think that, uh, uh, you know, that's a very uh, strong position. Uh, uh, you know, for me, I, you know, all this stuff is happening so fast that I, my, my, I'm, I'm dizzy from the amount of scandal and the amount of people with ideas that I abhor. But do you think it becomes dangerous, though, when you start? Um, like, I don't like Steve Bannon's views on, on gay marriage well, I, I, at all. But when we start Steve saying— Steve Bannon wants you in jail. I don't care. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, but I mean, I be really clear. <laughs> if he if he really knew everything about you, he would have issues with you. But, but yeah. that, and that's fine. But I, I don't like his opinion. I think his opinion on that stuff stinks. Mm -hmm. But do we get into a dangerous area when we start saying that I don't want that person to have a voice because his opinion stinks? Well, that's a really I, scary. It's really area. about who you pay for their voice. Everybody should have a voice, but a company decides who to pay to speak, and so. This isn't a freedom of speech issue in terms of should they be silenced, should we not cover him? He's on a salary, and so if, if there's a guy who is really, like, violently against foreigners, trans people, homosexuals, Muslims, and we say, like, I'm going to pay that guy to say more of that, it's fucking weird. Now, I get he's been here for years, uh, and that's part of, you know, the complication of this, which is... There may be 10% of the country that agrees with him, and does it make sense for for ideas to be shared? I don't know. I don't have a strong opinion about it yet. I'm just processing it. But I do know it's really fucked up, and I'm really disappointed in the country that they're not disgusted. The fact it's, that there are a lot of people in this country who are like, go, go, go on this stuff is horrifying. Do you think, though, that, and, and I understand people who don't like the guy. I definitely get it, because I don't like a lot of his views either. But then you get stuff like, uh, how about uh, a lot of the actors who have stood by Roman Polanski knowing what he did? Now, I know one is a position the of power. They're the worst. But that's a lot of them. Yeah. And who gives a fuck if Chinatown is good? He put his, well, let me not get graphic. No, no, but, 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 <laughs> but, but he did do that. And, and it, it's known that he did that. Yeah. And a lot of actors, like no one is saying, hey, if you worked for Roman Polanski, I'll never work with you again. No one is saying yeah, that, well, but a guy a... like Steve Bannon, they're saying your opinion stinks and we kind of prefer people don't hear it. Well, there's, uh, there's levels to it. You know, some people have opinions about who am I to judge I wasn't there. And, you know, you could debate whether you agree with that or not. But that's different than being the person who says Muslims should not be allowed to hold elective office or being the person who says homosexuals should be in jail. So mm -hmm. like the 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 person who uh, is a level past it, it's not exactly the same. But yeah, if I got a call to do punch up on the next Roman Polanski movie, I would say no. But do you and think there's tons of people I haven't worked with because I think they're destructive people. I'm not against them. You know, it's America. If people want to pay to see a Roman Polanski mo movie, that's legal. I'm not going to do it. Do you think them saying, who's to say I wasn't there? And I know that a lot of people probably say that. Do you think that's their way of kind of giving themselves an excuse when they really know what happened? I think people make a conscious choice to put themselves in a fog so they can enjoy things made by people or to work with people who commit heinous acts. So people are just like, they, they like kind of make a choice to not remember. It's like, yeah, did Michael Jackson... Do something. I, I, you know, I think that all got worked out. Let's listen to Thriller and right. they make a point right. to not go. No, Michael Jackson's insurance company gave a kid twenty-two million dollars, so someone had to make a choice to write that check because something happened. You don't write a check for twenty-two million dollars. You might write a million-dollar check to make someone go away. That's a but lot of money. Twenty-two too. million. There's probably a <laughs> reason is. why the. Ins have you ever tried to get insurance money? Like when there's like a fire or a hurricane. You know how hard they fight you, right? Yeah. To, to not pay. So if they go, yeah, we better pay that twenty-two million, right? And we all decide, like, yeah, but oh my god. Was that an insurance is, company though? Did he have like molester insurance? <laughs> How do we all get this insurance? Yeah. I don't. Under, I don't. I guess you can. You can cover anything. I think so, Lloyd's of London or something like so that. So people or? decide, like you know, they they come up with ways to be cool with it. And I, you know, 
I don't care if you – like if someone wants to watch all that stuff, I'm not, that's not my big issue. Like you shouldn't watch it. I, I, I don't care. But if you know someone's hurting people and someone says like you want to hang out with that guy and make something with them, it, it is weird – to not care. Right. You know, I, I mean, he has multiple accusations. It's not just that one. More have come out recently, yeah. And, uh, and when, you know, I have a child. I know what a 13-year-old looks like. So when you have a child and you've lived through what 13 looks like, and mm -hmm. then you imagine a guy giving a kid a quaalude and anally raping her in a tub, you think, it's demented. And it's, and it's, it's funny how an industry could try to... Ignore it because they like the movies. It's it's great. It's, yeah, they, they literally they hold him up and they say that he should be able to come back and that he they almost paint him as a victim. It's well, crazy. they feel bad because his wife was murdered and sure. he was in the Holocaust. And uh, but that's not really an excuse. Everybody who commits a crime usually has been hurt by somebody else. Yeah. Right. It doesn't mean they shouldn't uh, you know pay the price for. It hurting really is somebody. amazing that like you hear that. Like people will, like defenders will say, well, do you know what happened to his wife? She yeah. was pregnant. And it's like, yeah. And, and they feel bad for me. Like, he's had a hard time. He he had to he had to stay in, in Switzerland for eight months. <laughs> yeah. It's been a really rough go for him. Yeah, now he has, he yeah. has to live in France. If you yeah. drunk drive and you say, all right, your wife was murdered, but you drunk drove, I can I can forgive drunk driving for that. Right. Or if you fight a guy in a bar. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's really not any excuse for giving a you know 13-year-old a quaalude. It is interesting what you just said a, a couple of minutes ago, though, before Jim walked in, that, like... You're at this place, and I think that you're right, where people don't know what the historical implications are going to be of this thing. Like this, I, I, a lot of the people that are mad about, uh, like what Trump is saying and, and, and that lines up with what Steve Bannon has said and stuff like that, are, are upset because of the potential damage it could do. But if that damage doesn't get done... Well, damage is getting done, which is trans people are getting murdered because the environment has changed. There's more acts of hate in the world and in America because like, we've like allowed these voices to bubble up and get more active. Like Things are happening. But you know, when Reagan was president, we all thought we were going to get in, into war with Russia. Right. Right? right. And then that didn't happen, and Russia crumbled, and some people think Reagan was part of that. Some people think that's not why they crumbled. But it didn't happen. So suddenly Reagan's like... Reagan was kind of a good president. He stood down everybody. Then you have George Bush, who, uh, you know, now everyone loves him. He's a painter and he's all cute. But, like, how many, half a million people died in that war, which he, which they faked evidence to create a war. And so, clearly, he's way worse than Trump, mm -hmm. right? He's way worse. Whatever his decisions led to, people do not exist. And right now, we don't know if in the Trump era... He's going to create like the George Bush level of right. damage, or he's going to get voted out of office, and a lot of people lost health care, and a lot of rich people got richer, and it's not going to be the devastation of what the Iraq War unleashed. We don't know yet. But you can't forget Jimmy Carter fucking up by giving the Shah sanction, really pissed off radical Islam. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that a lot of uh, repercussions you, you don't know. But what I don't like is when people are just explicit, you know. Bannon is, ex you know, explicitly supporting the worst people. And also, you know, there's a train robbery happening in this country. I mean, the fact that people got excited about Trump because Trump was like, we're going to attack the banks and we're going to drain the swamp and d do all this. And then the, all he does is give money to wealthy people and that all of his supporters aren't furious. Mm -hmm. I mean, the estate tax saves Trump whatever, two to four billion dollars if he actually has money. Well, that's just stealing money. That's all it is. It's, he's not about to create jobs with that money. You know, if, if I'm about to get a tax break, let me tell the world, I'm not like, creating more jobs. And so this idea that we shouldn't pay for infrastructure as opposed to just giving rich people money and hope they create jobs is uh, ridiculous. And it is rich people paying for politicians who will who will give them a lot of money. If you make a billion dollars a year and there's a 10% tax break that you didn't have before, you just made a hundred million dollars. Sure. So if you gave a million to politicians to try to get that done, you got 99 it was a smart million investment. on top of that. So yeah. when you started making like a ton of money, did you never go through a phase when you were like, Oh, I just figured out how much these taxes are. They can't take these taxes I from me. I love paying taxes. I'm a rich guy now. I love paying taxes. I have my own nuclear army. 
I have the roads paved. <laughs> I there's hospitals everywhere. I there's never a second where I go like I'm getting ripped off. I can't right. believe there's infrastructure to the world. And I felt that way from day one. People like, don't mind paying taxes for that stuff. Like yeah. you're right. That's I don't mind my money going yeah. to hospitals, helping people. But the problem is that when they take money and they dump it in places I don't want them to dump it, and they waste the money. Like it's not why? a matter yeah. of pay, just giving uh, other countries money right. uh, for yeah. doing certain things in the UN. Uh, you know, we talk about gay people. Well, you know, look in America, gay people are not necessarily treated great. But you know, in other countries, uh, some of who are on the travel ban, they're being thrown off roofs. Yeah, and they're being thrown off roofs openly. Sure. Yeah. It's not a secret. So uh, you know, America treats you fairly well compared to other places. But yeah, I, the taxes I kind of agree with, and I kind of don't like. I don't like seeing my money wasted. I don't well, mind I it going. That. The government is a mess, and I agree there's a lot of waste. But what's happening now isn't a thoughtful look at how we spend money. It's basically every agency being dismantled. I, it's almost like Trump's trying to say, look, we don't need any of this. I'm not even going to fill positions to show you that nothing works. But what you don't have is like people in the State Department who are talking to countries so that we can communicate and not wind up killing each other. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, so I don't mind personally. I don't like the scam of it. I wish it was simpler and made sense. Uh, and, and I hear that the tax bill makes no sense. That it act Now that they are looking at it, that it screws rich people in ways they didn't expect. It's not actually functioning properly. I'm all for a flat tax. Just yeah. keep it simple. So it was Steve Forbes, I think, suggested a 17% flat tax, which was fair. You know, if you made a hundred dollars, you you paid seventeen. If you made ten million, you paid one point seven million. Whatever it would be, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't think that's unfair at all. But for some reason, I think as the IRS knows, it would kind of have much less of a function if people could just do that math. You yeah. know, whatever you made times point seventeen. Right. That's what you fucking Your hand over. Us. Yeah. And what do you need money for anyway? Like I have, I have more than enough money. What do I buy? I download some music. I buy books. Mm -hmm. I might take a vacation. I can afford my kids' college. Beyond that, if you're like the Koch brothers or something, all you're doing is buying ranches and taking gold helicopters to islands. I mean, there's nothing to spend money on. So if you're just like a, you know, a, a, a pig of consumption, you might be like, I need more billions. Well, what do you do? Do you do you yeah. are you a guy who spends a bunch of money on weird shit, or no. do, you, do you end up just socking it away? I don't spend money on anything. I'm, just, like, just... I'm like, you know what? I've got Spotify, but I'm also going to get Tidal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get both services. I'm going to get Beats and, <laughs> and the other one. Right. Uh, but, but really, that's about it. Or sometimes... Netflix and HD? Don't mind if I oh, do. Hey, I don't watch Hulu that much. I'm still going to get it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and it's a write-off. Because exactly, you're in entertainment. Yeah. It's a write-off. Cable, all your TV, all entertainment is a write-off. Yes. And uh, sometimes I'll get the other appetizer. I'm going to get both. Wow. I remember when I was very young, I was eating with Roseanne and Tom. Uh, Roseanne Arnold sure. and Tom Arnold. And Tom ordered vaguely. He was always like, uh, uh, we'll take some of those shrimp cocktails and a bunch, a bunch of those chicken fingers. He would never even tell the people the amount. Right. And I thought, well, that's having money. He what appears to be indulgent. He's an <laughs> indulgent man. <laughs> He's uh, consuming. I was surprised. I was watching the uh, the Netflix special, which I believe comes out uh, tomorrow. Is that right? Tonight at midnight. Tonight at midnight. Just... Right. The return. And may I say this? I'm at Gotham tonight with Colin Quinn. Oh my God, what a show. And I'm saying goodbye to my act, because when your act airs, Absolutely. you're not supposed to do it anymore. So tonight's the last time I'll do my act at Gotham in New York. And then tomorrow I'm at the 92Y doing like a Q&A, but I couldn't get anyone to interview me, so I'm interviewing myself. Are you really? And, uh, you just doing like a monologue or a one-person show? <laughs> I'm just going to show some video. Uh, Loud Wainwright's going to come. Maybe uh, I'm trying to convince some other people to come and, and just visit for fun. So uh, if you go to judapatow.com, you could see the last two performances of the year. Awesome. And I like the, uh, that there was multimedia, by the way, on the... Yeah, on that the was fun. Special. I show a lot of photos on the special. Yes, you do. To illustrate stories. So like I tell a story about throwing out the first pitch of the Mets game, and there's just... So many photos of it going wrong <laughs> that there's some hilarious photos of me with jazz hands throwing the and ball. Did badly. you suck? Did you did you suck throwing it? I, it did not reach the plate. It, no, it it, 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 it it literally rolled and and didn't even reach the catcher. And the crowd just booed so hard. Plus, like you have this, like this, like <laughs> horribly, like it looks like you're going into some kind of like anaphylactic shock <laughs> as you're throwing the ball. Like, and it's this, it's this uh, terrible freeze frame and close up of his face. Yeah. It's just, it's too much pressure. <laughs> it's too much pressure to get your mechanics correct, especially because, like, I also assumed that you must be because you're like, you must be this big Mets fan. 
and, well, and yeah. then you revealed on the special that you hadn't watched the Mets since '84. Well, so you the... showed up. And like, <laughs> I don't know. All anything the Mets about are these talking guys. to me like I know who they are. <laughs> I'm like, is that Lenny Dykstra? Is that Mookie? Who are you people? Wait, is that did, Kevin Mitchell? Did you practice first before you threw the pitch? I think the day b- before I, I did a little bit, and then right before you go in the stadium and you do it, and you're you're. Doing it well about half the time. And so you realize it's 50 50 that you're going to throw it <laughs> way to the right. You know. So, best case scenario, you're at 50 50. Yeah, I be- oh, best case scenario. And I really did get super scared at the last second. But when they announced my name, like, as you're saying, throwing out the first pitch, Judd Apatow, I, in that millisecond, I thought, oh no, I'm about to find out from 50,000 people how much they like me. Because if it's like Jay Z, they would explode. Right, and so they go throw out the first pitch. Oh, John Apatow, and I'm like, oh no, what happened? I'm about to find out how much I've impacted the culture, and then it was like this smattering of applause that was so <laughs> lame. And so as I walked to the mound, I literally got depressed. Like no one cares about me, and I and it threw me into a panic. And then I threw the ball. Would badly. being booed have been better? Like like Ty Cobb said, yeah. he liked to be booed on the road because at least there was an effect. Uh, it might have been better. It's it something might have been better than indifference. <laughs> indifference. Oh, smattering is awful. <laughs> it literally, it literally was like they said throwing out the first pitches. Manhattan Borough President Abe Rosenthal. It was that <laughs> level of we don't care. And I don't want to give away bits, but uh, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, Jim, the uh, the shot by shot of the Paul McCartney meeting is just the funniest <laughs> goddamn thing. And it, it also reminds you that like no matter how famous you think other people are, they're still not quite famous enough. Because you know I, mean? I, I asked Paul McCartney, uh, you know. I basically, uh, Paul McCartney kept coming to the improv watching shows, and he's so nice, and I've used his music in movies, and I thought, I'm going to ask him to lunch. And I said, uh, I knew if I gave, <laughs> I knew if I, if I gave him my phone, my phone number, my email, that he wouldn't use it. So I said, hey, how do I reach you? And I held out a pen and a, paper, a piece of paper, and he lifted his arms up in the air, like, like to get away from the pen and the pad. Uh, and my friend, um, <laughs> Mike Carano, who works at the improv, he took a picture of like a burst of photos where you see it. And, Dude, and you see the photo of, of McCartney. Like Judd is sitting there. And you see it it's like <laughs> from the back of Judd. And he's sitting there with a pen and paper. And McCartney's got his hands in the uh, air going like, oh, no, 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 no. What did he think you wanted? An autograph? No, I said, "What's your how do I? What's your email?" And, and it was the gesture of, "I will not be giving you my oh. email." But yeah. he's so nice, and I've seen him since, and he'll like give me a hug and say hello, which blows my mind. But you're not getting the email. I'm <laughs> not getting the email. That is, a, that is the key. Wow, well, he wouldn't give you. His, that's really funny, <laughs> and it looks so good. Um, Wait, hold on. Is it giving it away if you say what he said when that happened, or no? You know, it was very vague. It was. Yeah. I, I was also trying to get him to come see me. I was doing a show with Randy Newman. He's like, "Oh, I know where it is. I know where it is. I'll." I, I'll look into it. And, and then they, they told me that he was actually about to come to the show, and then he realized he had another uh, event. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it off. I think the special airing is somehow going to lead to well, the yeah, Paul McCartney Because he'll right? see it, and, yeah. and if he sees the pictures of him, so be funny if he sued you. <laughs> on, on I was used to a, a Beatles photo. I, also, yeah. I just love that, like, uh, you're, you're, as much as like you're credited for kind of creating the entire new wave of, of comedy and film as we know it. You're still just a fan that's oh, getting yeah. turned down by your exactly. idols. Like, Have you, who's, who's turned you down? Because you love taking the photos. Who's turned you down? Oh, I've been turned down by Mick Jagger. Whoa. Nicolas Cage. You used to have a great... Diana Ross. You used to have, before the new De Niro stories, yes. the old De Niro story was awesome. De Niro was what my first celebrity turned. Oh, Frank Vincent was my first. De Niro turned me down. Frank right. Vincent. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we were walking into his, this is like 2003. I saw Kiss and Aerosmith. Oh, yeah. And I was trying to walk backstage. My friend was backstage. was going to bring me to see you know Gene. And I see Frank Vincent. I go, oh, Frank, I'm such a big fan. Can we take a picture? He goes, ah, not now. And I'm like, I got the camera ready. And he goes, I said not now. <laughs> He really shut me up. <laughs> uh, that, that reminds me of the Norm McDonald story where he walked up to Jerry Lewis at a boxing match and he's like, Hey, Jerry, I'm such a big fan and you're the reason why I got in comedy. And then Jerry Lewis goes, Go back to your seat. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one that I ever saw. Oh. We've, we've told this story a bunch on the air before, but I went to, uh, to Comic Con with Norton. And like when you go to Comic Con yeah. and there's just kind of 
celebrities about. Yep. One of the funnest things is to just watch Jim try to be like, is that somebody? Is that somebody? Yeah. Is that yeah. somebody? <laughs> so we were at this uh, event for something that William Shatner was promoting called yeah. MyOuterspace.com. Didn't quite take off like yes. MySpace. No. <laughs> but we were sitting there and Jim was like, yeah, let's hang out here. And LeVar Burton walks in. Nice. You know? And Jim goes like, oh, I'm going to try to get LeVar Burton. And I was sitting there on camera duty like, okay. And Jim goes over to LeVar Burton and he goes, hey, man, I'm a big fan. Would you mind just uh, taking a shot with me? Yeah. And LeVar Burton looks at Jim and he goes, yes, but first, allow me to complete this mission. And he... And he, he walked. Walks he wanted away. to do something at the event, but he called it a mission. Like I was a Star Trek fan. Oh, he was talking hysterical. to me in language. Oh my god! <laughs> and so, and he was, out, and then he goes to the stage to like try to get Shatner's yeah. attention. And Shatner like looks down at him and doesn't acknowledge him and just keeps. It doing was what so he was great doing. to watch him yeah. get fucking. Shatner did to him what he just did to me. It was so satisfying. I and, heard, uh, and we're sitting there watching him, right? And Jim is just like, "We're gonna get him. Oh, we're gonna get him. We're getting." Now it's become this spiteful thing. Now it's now it is and a mission. We follow him as he walks away from the stage and he goes into the green room area and we follow him there and a couple of girls start talking to him and he's like oh we should take a picture or whatever jim sees him take a photo with the girls and he's like we got him come on and we walk over to him he takes the photo with the girls he says goodbye to him and jim just gets next to him and he goes okay and one more Levar, one more he and was so fucking miserable when he saw that it was me uh, he so knew he got got <laughs> <laughs> he wanted no part of me. <laughs> oh, I have, I have uh, all sorts of those. Like just getting turned down. But you know, uh, just great weird photos. The one, the one that I, I really like was that uh, Steve Martin was talking to Mick Jagger at this Oscar party, and me and Paul Rudd uh, didn't know either of them. And so what we did is we walked to either side of them while they were talking, and we had a friend walk over, and we like acted like we were all talking. Yeah. And the picture is amazing, but they, they don't even know we're there. Four chums chatting about the award show. Yeah. Mick turned me down. I was in a hotel in Beverly Hills, and I walk into the gym, and I'm I'm in this like yoga area, just doing some like whatever I was doing, and I walk back into the main gym area of the hotel. There's two people in the entire area, Mick Jagger and his trainer. Yeah. That's it. Wow. And I'm like, holy fuck. So I have my phone and I go to walk <laughs> back and I'm like, Mick. And he goes, sorry, mate, no photos. And it was just us. I was like, all right. Uh, so I was like, all right. I, I didn't them. bother him. I yeah. embarrassed myself. You know, I said, so I somebody had... just saying that Springsteen was walking down the street saying, uh, not going to happen today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were trying to get a photo with him? Yeah. Someone said that they saw, uh, uh, oh, Dennis Miller told me this story, this is like in the 90s, and he was walking down the street with William Shatner, and people would all say hello. This is before people took photos with him. Sure. Everyone would say hello, and he would just keep his head down, and every once in a while just put his hand up doing the live long and prosper oh. wave. And so he'd be like, he would just go like that every once in a while, <laughs> and just keep walking. <laughs> it's got to be draining when you're that famous. Like Mick Jagger's yeah. that famous. He's that famous. Like where everywhere you go, everybody wants to f a photo, an autograph, a moment. Something. Like JFK Jr. was flying. The reason he flew his plane yeah. is because every time he get on a plane, people would talk about how much his father meant. Like you just can't get a moment away from who yeah. you are. People don't quite understand what a nightmare that is. That everywhere you go, people throw the camera on, and they're shooting video without telling you a yeah. lot of times, which is well, scary. You've watched, not only you, but like everybody around you, all the freaks and geeks, yeah. people who were kind of mm -hmm. just a bunch of weird kids at the time have yeah. all become yeah. that level of famous, right? Well, it's funny because the first guy who got famous from our friend group was Rob Schneider. So Rob Schneider had the copy guy Remember, making right. copies, and he I had this character. Oh, yeah, okay. no. And he was the first guy. The judge, like, the judgemeister, making yeah. copies. And that was a big thing. And he was the first guy where like people would walk up, and we were like, "Oh my god, that's so weird." I remember Jonas said the the day after Superbad came out that it like everything had changed in like wow. one moment. But certain people are very recognizable. Like some people can kind of slip in and out. I remember Jim Carrey would always get recognized because he was so tall. And, he, and so people would just how tall is he? I've never been in the room with him. Yeah, I know he's got to be six two or something. Oh, okay. But he just you when he walked in a room, you knew he was there. And we were in a bookstore in a mall in New Jersey. I think we were doing a, like a stand up show, and people started walking up to him asking for his autograph. This is in the early '90s, and then suddenly you realized so this was the, in Living Color, Jim. Yeah. Okay. That the entire mall was headed towards the bookstore. Like it was turning into a hard day's night. Wow. And it was the first time where I thought, we're literally in danger right now. Like there's an entire mall running at this bookstore. Did he sign? Uh, Jim did sign. I think, you know, 
Jim had a period where he he was trying to figure out what to do, like sign or not sign. Sure. And then he tried the thing where like he said, like, I, you know, I'm not going to sign, but I'll talk to you. And he did a funny thing, which is he would not walk away. But he would say, like, hey, I'll talk to you for as long as you want to talk. But and I no one wants that. <laughs> no one actually wants human connection. Right. They all want the picture or the autograph. How do you feel about, like, because you've now, obviously your wife's an actress, but you've put your daughters in movies. Yes. So do people, if you're out with the family, mm -hmm. do people want a picture with the whole Apatow crew? You know, there's a level of fame that's perfect. Yeah. Which I think is what we have, which is, let's say on a scale of one to ten, we're a, we're a two. Okay. Or one and three quarters. And I remember Gary Shandling always said to me, I have the perfect level of fame because most people don't recognize me. But when someone does, they're very excited to see me. And I feel like we have that, but they're not even that excited. You're higher than, <laughs> no, you're higher than two level famous. Yeah. 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 You're higher, much higher. So is your wife. You're much higher than that. But yeah, we, I mean, when we go places, it's, we're not hassled much. And most of the time, I, we think, I, we might be at a level of fame where people recognize us, but don't care enough to walk over. <laughs> so, Maybe right. that everyone huh, does. Is that? Oh yeah, I think it is. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I would say, you guys are yeah, yeah, six level famous. Pretty good level fame. Like whereas McCartney's a ten, Jagger's a ten. Yes. Yeah. There are people that you. I always think it must be weird to be Mick Jagger in every room you walk in your entire life. Every person in the room is so excited you just walked in. They're all looking for you, and there's very few people who are not. Struck by the fact you're there. Yes. Right. Very but few people. You also could easily become more famous because, especially like with the Netflix thing, because you're putting yes. your face on yes. it. Right? Like uh, your your movies mm -hmm. are way more famous than you are. Yes. Right? Well, we'll see. I mean, I've never done anything like this. You know, I always You nervous about the response? I got my first review in the Orange County Register, and I, I tried to look at it quickly because I didn't even know it was review. I thought it might have been just a promotional interview or something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I did these promos, and the premise of the promos was that I was talking to other comedians, and they were all telling me, don't make the special. So it's it's like, uh, you know, uh, Chris Gethard and Berbiglia, and they're like, yeah, don't do it. Why why risk it? Don't do it. And Amy, Amy Schumer is really funny. She's like, don't do it. And I'm like, I already spent the money on right. the theater. She's like, okay, do it. <laughs> uh, and so in this review, they're like, should he have done it? And then he's like, well, yeah, it was pretty funny. I guess so. <laughs> it was like a, like a kind of a B plus kind yeah, of we'll review. Accept it. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that's about to happen. But you know, I'll just like say to someone, just send me the good ones. But I hope people like it. I mean, I, I'm proud of it. I think it came out well, and it was 